back again. Uh, this time with a game between me and Niklas. Uh, and we actually have a very, very short time for the introductions here because the game will soon be underway and it will be quite a quick game. Uh, quite a painful game, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Uh, well, frustrating. So, yeah. So I, I'm playing the deck that I decided to call Puke. <laughs> uh, for, for a good reason. Uh, Which we'll actually see. Yeah, it's just a disgusting deck. It's it, it's one of those decks that I've been building lately, which is basically a deck that... I, the, the goal of the deck is to make you have not... make you not have fun. Um, <laughs> my, de my decks tend to be that way. I know it's not good at all for the player base. Uh, I actually had another deck with me, but I opted to play this one. So at, For shits and giggles. Yeah. So I start by playing a um, exploitation. exploitation and a free witty worm. And then I proceed to play a spastic tentacles. Turn one spastic tentacles is always bad for yeah. your opponent, especially if you go first. Yeah, since he's then stuck on turn zero. I start my turn with playing a resource, big surprise. Yep. And then I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Since my entire hand is a lot of combos, so I could... <laughs> a card's costing three or more. Yeah. So I could have a really great game if I could play those cards. Yep. And you uh, start swinging away and play another Spastic Tentacle. Yeah, bringing you back to turn zero. And you just bounce the resource, put it back, and I don't even realize that it's my turn again. <laughs> And you start and swing away for six once again. Yep. Well, so basically, I just delayed the start of the game, but set his influence to a much lower total. Uh, and put yep. three characters in play, and you play a Gilded Yurt. Yep. So now I'll be looking to reusing those Spastic Tentacles. At least now I get free resources, so I can play my... And martial arts training, yep, which would have been so much better earlier, so I could actually block your witty worm or whatever and kill them. Yeah. So at the end of Nicholas's turn, I yurt out one of the spastic tentacles. It comes back in and bounces a resource. So we're back at back at three. Yeah, it's just a stupid deck. So as you as you can see, we're into turn, uh, what's the turn count? I think four? Yeah. Four. And we're still at our starting resources. Yeah. So I attack in a party because uh, if he blocks, he. Uh, well, yeah, I can yurt out the Spastic Tentacles, which is the card I want to yurt out. Uh, if he doesn't block, I can still, uh, you know, hold back with my. Others. Yeah, and block with uh, the other Spastic Tentacles. So here's where things get interesting. Uh, I play a Department of Reactions, and Nicholas, once again, with three res resources, plays his, um, uh, his other training. martial arts trainee. So now, now he has two of them, which means that I can't overpower him if I want to yurt out character. Yeah, so we can't really uh, opt out to actually attack with all three of them in a party and still continue to yurt and keeping me at low resources. Yeah, I, be which because I'd, I'd, lo I'd lose a turn of yurting. Basically. Yeah. And uh, also, you know that if I get four resources, a Thief Dorian is going to hit the deck. Yeah, or... Uh, well, field. Well, it's it's possible that it... And I don't want to face a huge character. No. So I just pass the turn. Uh, so you're actually up to three resources once again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and here I think we'll see one of the most weird plays of the game. Uh, I remember... Raising eyebrows over this, I didn't <laughs> actually know what you were doing. No, okay, so it wasn't this. No, uh, I think I did it uh, next turn. Yeah. So I draw a card at the end of the turn, uh, and I'll yurt the Spastic Tentacles. I'll pay free to draw a card since I actually want to do anything for my resources. Yeah, exactly, because once the, so the Spastic Tentacle comes back, you can't use those <laughs> resources. <laughs> And I start with... with Playing a resource. Yeah, Big exactly. Uh, and still, I can't really attack. I know Nicholas can't really afford to attack either, since he's basically... At one resource. Yeah. Uh, so I top-decked another Spastic Tentacles, which is really, really good for me. 
since he's now once again locked into turn zero, uh, he plays. Uh, there, there it comes. Uh, the tripole magnet. I have no idea why he did that. Uh, it's not like to I'm going honest, to discard any cards. No. I'm guessing you just wanted to play cards. I wanted to play cards, and also since I know that I have two uh, in hand. Uh, well, I had two resources, and I know that if I got my fired hand or a cock block or anything, I can get gears into the discard pile and I can make one of my trainees much bigger. Yeah, so here's where I once again can attack. Uh, and I know that Nick, because since Nicholas is at one resource, I know that he, he can't really uh, do anything. Yeah. Uh, even if it... Yeah, because I have a uh, Ministry of other smaller ministries out, so if he just devotes his whole turn to attacking, I can block with the Spastic Tentacles and just yard it in response. Uh, so he actually blocks with the guys. I lose one Spastic Tentacles. Uh, Not that big of a deal at the moment. And another one... Uh, comes in, I guess. I'm just sorting my cards. Uh, I put it down under the yurt to permanently mark it as yurted. Uh, I think I drew a card at the start of yeah, my turn, so actually. Well. Yeah, because at this point, I the, the cards, the resources doesn't even matter. Uh, I mean, Nicholas can pay three to draw a card all he wants. Um, it's not going to change that much. Yeah. So I swing through with a lot of guys. And I need to block um, at least one character the next turn. And I don't actually get any characters to block. Yeah. With, so I die. Yeah. So that's why the deck is called Puke. <laughs> it's, it, it, it can be a complete lockdown as it was in this game. Uh, otherwise it's it's generally a deck that's very miserable miserable to play against. Uh, and I think we actually have a, a rematch coming up. Yeah. Uh, we'll get into that since it's only been seven and a half minutes uh, of this. We left the camera on and the other games weren't finished, so we thought, what the hell? <laughs> it's not like we took a long time and neither yeah. of our decks likes to go late game. Yeah, well, my deck actually can handle going late game. Uh, since Apparently I... not, since you win after six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it, it can also be a, a lockdown deck. Uh, because basically I have... I tend to build decks like that as well. I tend to have some early game and late game. I don't often go for mid game. Mid game is for, you know, people like you. Yeah, pro players. <laughs> <laughs> So in this deck, I also play the the Boon Spider combo, uh, which I really like. Yeah, <laughs> I like the combo. This card here is a starting hand, but it's it's like once again, it's just like a mean combo, <laughs> very very mean. Um, I don't remember who won the roll. I believe you did. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But this time, I actually get a little more cards I can play on turn one. Uh, but since I now also know what you play, since when I first f saw that you played Double Arcanist, I thought, fine, he might have some discarding cards, so I'll play things that I'm fine with having in discard and other things. So I kept a few gears and such, but you started playing Greed. Yeah. <laughs> which I wasn't really... Prepared for so yeah. I, I I'm not usually a, a heavy greed player. I use the one splash a lot, as you might have seen. Yeah. Uh, so here we see the good old turn one spastic tentacles, <laughs> but this time Nicholas has I got the gear to respond, um, which is always always bad because then he'll, as we mentioned in the other game, fetch his uh, uh, his Luthierdam Goliath. Which is a very good card with Thief Doyen, and it's a very good card with Tripod Magnet if it's in your discard. Yeah. Since you don't have to actually pay for it or yeah. have the threshold. But here I actually search for my Tripod Magnet. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. Uh, so you search for a Tripod Magnet, and I basically know that you have the Goliath in hand. <coughs> cough, cough. Yep. Uh, the thing is, I'm 
usually use the I got the gear to search for my triple magnet at this point because of the simple reason I only have two tripod magnets. I have no idea where I've put the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been playing for like four years and I apparently have misplaced them. Yeah, totally four years. <laughs> I recently calculated that I've been playing for seven years, I think. Uh, yeah, in May. Uh, I actually found the exact date when I started playing, when I learned the game. Ooh. It was uh, the 23rd of May. Uh, 2007. <laughs> at this very store that Ooh. we recorded these games at. I play my martial arts trainee since it's a good counter to, well, any two life character. Yeah, exactly. And I play the Arcane Research, which is a very good card once you get the Spastic Tentacles lock going, because then you can accelerate resources. Which your opponent can't. Yeah, exactly. So... Which doesn't make for, yeah. Well, actually, it makes for just as unfun games as the one we saw earlier. Uh, but I can do more. Yeah. There's a lot of resource ramping in our meta at the moment. Yeah, it's like it's basically you either play resource ramping or you play aggro or you play like banker. Draw a lot of cards <laughs> so that you don't have to resource ramp as much in the beginning, but. You just continually play resources. Yeah. Pay four to play a resource every now and then, and you'll basically be fine. Yeah. Because with Gilded Yurt and Grimalkin and stuff like that, you'll draw. You'll draw through your deck regardless of your resources. Yep. It's like you can have two resources and just have a crest and two exploitation in field, and you'll just draw through it. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. See and well, you start with playing a face down. Uh, yeah, opting not to trigger those hidden ruins, and I play a wanton wizard. More, more ramping, more ramping. <laughs> Always the ramp. Uh, very good card. So at this point, you have quite a lot of more resources than me, but I feel that I can catch up at least. Yep. Uh, oh, so and. I I, I also and here we see the Thief Dawian uh which and Goliath thing which eight, which eight. is always present. <laughs> it's it's just it's like Nicholas' signature play. Yeah. Uh I just want to point out uh the the playing mat that Nicholas has, the two headed Majig one. It's a very, very rare mat. He's the only one in Sweden who has one. Uh the mat itself is very good very cool. Uh I like it a lot. I I was attending Gen Con, uh, but I didn't get to play in that event since I played other games instead. Uh, your loss since I won. Yeah, exactly, and I would have been your partner. So, well, if numbers could help you win, we, well, we know I could help you win. Kudos to numbers for helping with that. And yeah. I hope he enjoys his play mat as well. Yeah, I'm sure he does. And here comes my second signature move, attacking a party with... Thief Doyen and martial arts trainee with a tripole magnet and destroying uh, the tripole magnet to pick up the Goliath. Yeah. But since I don't really have to do it when he blocks with one character, I let it stay in the discard pile. Yeah, no, exactly. He so might bounce it. Yeah, and th there might be other reasons to, you know, keep it in play. I mean, who knows? I might want to increase its life as a response to yeah exactly doing I, I, see, since it's free to pick up the gear I, I think it was the right play not to yeah to take it there since you always want to do it actually in response to something trying to destroy the martial arts training yeah as long as he can survive the combat at least yeah <clears throat> but at this point I actually well big surprise I feel that I can perform quite well in this match. Yeah, you have the the presence, uh, the board presence, uh, for sure. Uh, you have no cards in hand. A very good way to play around the the <laughs> venomous sack spider. Uh, and at this point, you have one card in hand, so I force you to pl pay for to play a resource. I could have just discarded it, but I felt that a resource would do me much better. Yeah. Yeah, but either way, 
you know, you having cards in your hand that you can plan for using is not good, so... Uh, and I wanted to block that... Uh, yeah, since you attack have... to possibly force a play out of you. Yeah, also, you have more resources, so you can... You can spare a sack spider, it's fine. Yeah, well, actually, you're at seven resources and I'm at nine. No, you're at ten. It's hard to count from here. Uh, well, you might be right. And you yeah, passed you a are. turn, and strangely enough, you didn't attack with the spastic tentacles. Yeah, strangely enough. <laughs> uh, and I know if I get a, a strawberry or a hot pepper, I win. Uh, so I'm probably going to start with drawing a card, uh, which I did, and then I draw another card, as we say there. Uh, but I didn't get my strawberry and I didn't get my hot pepper. Uh, yeah. So I just play an old attack. Yep. Uh, and I think... Oh, that... right! <laughs> I actually like this play you did. <laughs> well, I, th I think in, in retrospect, I think I could have played this a lot better. You know, not, not blocking and redirecting the damage to you. Uh, spoilers, there's a Delectable Boon co coming up. <laughs> uh, delectable Boon is, I'm pretty sure, the second to best tactic in the game. Yeah. Uh, only Dark Awakening is better. Yeah, and since you have more than 8 resources free, I sort of see it coming, so I blow up the Tripod Magnet, because if a uh, martial arts trainee only assigns 2 damage to uh, the Spastic Tentacle, it's not going to get more to assign when it goes down the speed class and you have already said the next damage that goes to spastic goes to something else. So even if I blow up and get to Goliath, I wouldn't uh, get to actually inflict any of that damage. Yeah. So here I play the Delectable Boon, redirecting the next 8 damage uh, that the spastic tentacles takes back to the Thief Doyen. And thereby killing it. Yeah. And you take no damage. Yeah, but you still have the unpickable uh, guy Third. with the... the <laughs> with 13 in strength. Yeah, exactly. So I play Hidden Ruins, uh, revealing... Uh, ministries of other smaller ministries. Yeah, just to draw a card. Which is a good way to actually spend those last uh, one or two free resources you have. When you can't draw a card. Uh, yeah, and I start by drawing a card, I think. Yeah, since you need a character. Yeah, I need, I need something. I need an out to that. Uh, I'm not sure I actually play many outs. Uh, well, actually, the Violating Anomaly would have been one way to deal with it. Since it can block and then bounce the, uh, the Goliath. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but we didn't get to see any violating during this match. Yeah, it's... <laughs> actually, I only play three violating anom anomalies in this deck. I would play four. Uh, but I only... When, when I built the deck, I just grabbed the foil once I had. So <laughs> <laughs> I ended up with three. Uh, because I had my uncommons at... Uh, well, basically, none of the box. Uh, and I was lazy. Yeah. That tends to happen when we build decks. Like, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. cards do I have lying around? Yeah, I'll be. Yeah, there, like there's this. often your rares and foils are like, well, I'll take these. Uh, one time, or rather, the first time I built the mono monarchist deck, it was when I realized that I have a lot of arcanist rares <laughs> and a lot of arcanist foils. <laughs> so I just threw them all together and built a deck from it. It kind of worked. Uh, I I continue to build up, build it, uh, uh, evol evolving it into a much better deck than it was at first, at least. Uh, but it still wasn't good enough. But yeah. it performed. Yeah, I think it may have won one of our local tournaments, but you know that that, that doesn't say much. It depends very much on what on the week. Play. Yeah, what people play. Sometimes pe people play wacky decks. Sometimes they play like top tier decks. Yeah, it's different every week. Yeah, and you don't really know what to expect. No. Uh, I generally bring up one fun deck and one 
or, 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 or in this case, this deck, yeah. uh, and one a little bit more serious. Uh, I also had with me the uh, the Arcanist Warlord Deception Volition deck. What? Yep. Oh right, that one. Yeah, with... it's actually quite good. Yeah, I think I think it's good. I think it has potential. Um, but I haven't really. I I've perfected it. Yeah, I've played it in a few tournaments, but with, with decent success. Yeah, I was thinking about trying it out. Yeah, I I as I said, I think it might have potential. It's there. There are so many good synergies, and it has it. It can apply so much pressure early yeah. with the war beast and the assailants. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Well, oh, uh, back to the game. Like it now actually has played two. Uh, Who cares about the game? <laughs> <laughs> two ministries of other smaller ministries to well, basically handle that. I swing away for thirteen each time I attack, uh, but I pay for it to actually try and attack one of them and destroy it. And yep. you don't block, which I personally. I would have blocked, but I can yeah, well, understand why you didn't, since you just wanted me to attack them. Well, destroy. the thing is, it's it's probably like two resources when you attack. Yeah. Uh, so, I figured I'd rather have a blocker for when you attack my life points. Yeah. Since you can play more buildings. Yeah. <laughs> and we have another Venomous Sack Spider. It's <laughs> I love that card so much. <laughs> yeah, and I played Dry Gulch on it since what's the, uh, I didn't really have any. Well, well, Dry Gulching to... uh, <laughs> Spider is always good. Yeah, and I didn't have any reason to actually let her stay in play. Yeah, uh, and we see me actually playing the Dwarvish Grimalkin, drawing cards, standard banker play as we Shame mentioned earlier. Shame on you! Shame on you! <laughs> And I play Delicious Strawberries of Death, depleting his field. Uh, which then gives me the opportunity to attack its life point for 15 damage. Yeah, which you actually don't do. You attack the Department <laughs> of Reactions. I pointed out that, why can't you just attack my life points and be over with it? <laughs> and I was like, oh, right. I could do that. Yep. <laughs> and uh, since other... <laughs> but I play a boon. Uh, but e either way, I concede the game. <laughs> yeah, so. since uh, we were about to start the, <laughs> the next round as well. Yeah, the, the funny thing was that uh, even as I said it, I didn't even think that I had the boon in hand. But then <laughs> I would look at my eyes and say, oh, well, I just talked you into doing something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but the game was lost anyway. I, yeah. there, there's no way I could return from that. No. But that was that. Yep. Have fun, play spoils. Exactly! <laughs> Stop the recording!